Have the Auburn Tigers finally bought into their identity on offense? You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining me today, Auburn Daily's own Lindsey Crosby, hanging out with us as he does every single Monday, recapping Auburn's win, the 31-15 to win over the Vanderbilt Commodores. And Lindsey, we'll talk about the fact that just one quarterback played the entire time. We'll talk about how I think Auburn's pass rush could be key for Auburn to win some of their remaining games. But let's talk about Auburn's offensive identity first and foremost, because that's been a topic really since the season started is what in the world are we trying to do? What in the world are we trying to accomplish on offense? And now it seems like Auburn's bought into the fact that Jarquez Hunter is their guy, giving him the ball 19 times officially. Technically, it was more than that because some plays were called back. But this offense starts and ends right now with Jarquez Hunter and running behind this offensive line is getting better as the season goes on. Yeah, they've they finally kind of settled on this is what we want to do. And I think I do think a big part of that also is Jarquez finally looks like the Jarquez we thought he was going to be all year. Yeah. Um, not gonna speak just to why he wasn't necessarily maybe ready for the season or anything, but he finally has looked more like the Jarquez that we saw behind Tank for the last couple of years. Explosive can pick up yards in a hurry, can hit a hole and just bust through it. And so I think that's kind of made it a little bit easier to have an identity, right? You can, so because these running plays are working, he's getting chunk plays, he's explosive in the in the running game. And so now it gives you a foundation to build off of. And we've seen Auburn go with a lot of quick passes, you know, highlight the run, but not necessarily do nothing but run. And it, I don't think there's a, I don't think it's a coincidence that the offense flows a lot better now that Jarquez Hunter is running more like the Jarquez Hunter we expected to see all season. No question about it. He busted the big run against Ole Miss and ever really since that run. He's been exceptional. He's been exceptional. Against Vanderbilt, 19 carries for 183 yards, two touchdowns. That's 9.6 yards a carry, but kind of negates probably the most impressive run of the game that he had, which was when he was in the goal line situation and he was taking the direct snap and he carried like half of the Vanderbilt defense into the end zone. That doesn't count because of uh, the penalty, sadly. Um, But you know what it is, whatever it is, what it is. But I I think Jarquez Hunter's ability to play at the level he's been playing at so far over the last three days, three games, rather Peyton Thorne, I think has been, Really, really solid. 17 of 27 passing the football, but both Auburn and PFF, they allot the drops differently, but we're counting five drops here, and I don't think the Cam Brown drop is counted either. So, I mean, we're talking about six of his throws here that probably should have been caught were certainly catchable footballs, Mm -hmm. and PFF has his adjusted completion percentage of like 85 percent which is bonkers and something that when you look at what he did against mississippi state is encouraging because i don't think it necessarily gets more difficult when you look at arkansas coming this upcoming week when you look at at what arkansas has done this season there's nothing that says he shouldn't be able to i mean exactly like you said he uh, Jarquez, the offense flowing better, him running better, and then what Arkansas has not been able to do against any of their SEC opponents so far, this should go fine. And there's a lot of a lot of people, Vegas fans, who are really kind of nervous about this matchup this weekend. And to me, it doesn't feel like it's that bad. I know that Auburn doesn't necessarily have the best history in Fayetteville, but this absolutely, the way that you're playing right now, uh, this seems like your offense should be able to get it done against Arkansas. That's been the question. It hasn't been the defense. The question all season's been the offense. Can you get offensive consistency? And it feels like Jarquez should be able to get plenty of yards against Arkansas. You should be able to throw the football against Arkansas. I don't have a lot of concerns about this weekend like a lot of the Auburn family does. 
Yeah, Vegas right now, our, our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook have Arkansas as a two and a half point favorite right now. Which I'm, you're I'm, at home, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm looking at that Auburn money line really heavy, really, mm -hmm. really heavy right now. If I if, if I'm betting on this one, another aspect of the offensive identity that I think is important to discuss is the fact that okay, four players played all of Auburn's offensive snaps: Dylan Wade, Gunnar Britton, Connor Liu. That's not unusual. And then Peyton Thorne, which up to this point, that has been unusual because of the quarterback rotation that's been a part of Auburn's offense. That doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Um, Auburn had several opportunities where I think a red zone package for Robbie would have worked. And in fact, when they tried to you know, implement a package outside of their traditional offense led by Peyton Thorne, they put Jarquez Hunter in before they did Robbie. So to me, it really kind of seems like, Lindsay, that the whole quarterback switching in and out thing is done. Yeah, the 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 big moment where I expected to see Robbie was when they went to a package in the red zone where Jarquesh took a direct snap. Peyton was under center and he kind of ducked out last second and Jarquesh takes a direct snap and just fires up the middle. Uh, that's the scenario where week two, week three, Robbie's checked into the game and you're in a different formation and you're kind of doing some stuff with Robbie there at the goal line. If that, if, if you're willing to take the ball out of Peyton Thorne's hands there, but you're not putting it into Robbie Ashford's hands, you're not going to be doing that. This is, yeah. this is Peyton Thorne's offense now. And I mean, you mentioned the, the adjusted completion percentage. He's been, if, if you adjust it, he's been a very, very good quarterback. One of the best Auburn quarterbacks in a decade, you know, as far as, Back to back over 85% adjusting completion percentage. Uh, and and so with him able to do what he needs to do offensively with uh, Hunter running like he does, you don't have a need to put the ball into Robbie Ashford's hands because you're getting more than enough production from the running game with just Jarquez Hunter being the lead uh, ball carrier, the one touching the ball the most. Yeah, and, and I think some of... The offense is kind of interesting how it took us a long way to get to this point regarding the receiving game. And we'll discuss that in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Athletic Brewing and today's Athletic Brewing Game Changer of the Week. We've got to go with Jarquez Hunter. Um Athletic Brewing Company, much like Jarquez Hunter, they have completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good, much like Jarquez Hunter has changed Auburn's offense. It was anemic, and now it's explosive, scoring multiple touchdowns uh, from outside of the red zone this past week due to his success running the football. Athletic Brewing, they, uh, they've got great-tasting brews that are award-winning. They beat out full-strength beers in global competitions. They're fit for all time, so you can drink them anywhere, anytime, make any activity even more enjoyable. And, of course, you don't ever have to worry about hangovers. You can find Athletic Brewing Co.'s non-alcoholic brews at a store near you, or you can buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use code LOCKEDON for 15% off your first online order. That is LOCKEDON. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company fit for all times. Today's show also brought to you by our friends at Alumni Hall. Alumni Hall is the best place to buy all of your Auburn sports swag. They've got three great in-store locations in Auburn, Opelika, and Huntsville. You can also go online at alumnihall.com. It's where I got this pullover. If you're watching on YouTube, it's where I get pretty much all of my Auburn gear, and I highly, highly recommend you do the same. Seasons are changing. You may need some warmer stuff. They've got a bunch of different pullovers and jackets and hoodies. They've got you covered for basketball swag, and baseball is not too far around the corner either. They've got you covered. So there are three physical locations, Alumni Hall in Auburn, Opelika, and Huntsville, and also at alumnihall.com. Lindsey Crosby, our guest, as he is every single Monday, when you look at how Auburn is spreading the football around in the passing game, they're leading receivers in targets. Javarius Johnson, Rivaldo Fairweather, Cam Brown, and Jay Fair. Just like we kind of thought it would be 
going into spring forever ago, right? There was so much energy around Rivaldo Fairweather and the fact that he kind of took over that position very, very early on in spring. Mm -hmm. It was very easy to see that. And we all had all these high hopes for Cam Brown. And then, of course, Jay Fair over the course of the offseason kind of ascended. But And then Javaris Johnson was the best receiver from a year ago that, that obviously came back. And we, it feels like we went way out of the way to finally get to this point, right? Shane Hooks getting a ton of targets. You went out and got Jair Shorter. Um, Caleb Burton got a few starts there down the stretch, and I think I think he's certainly a part of this offense. Don't get me wrong. He only had one target, I believe, on Saturday. But it's just kind of funny to me that it took forever to kind of get to this point, right? When Auburn's finally grooving, and you're like, well, who are they throwing the ball to? And it's like, oh. It's the dudes fans wanted to get the target share um, this whole time. So I, I thought that was kind of eye opening. Wisdom of the crowds, right? No, I, I, I mean, it's, it's something where in this situation, it didn't take so long to get to them because of bad coaching. It didn't take so long to get to them because of favoritism or anything like that. It took so sure. long to get to them because nobody to this point has really stepped up and asserted themselves as. You have, like, I, I am so good, you have to start me. Outside of Revolta Fairweather, who we expected right. to be the starter coming into the year, none of the other receivers have been, you know, lights out, hands down, number one guys that you could not take off the field. And so it's like, it's nice that we got to these guys. It's, I'm curious to, to, to think about if we had realized in spring that these were going to end up being the guys what other positions could we have prioritized in the portal outside of them? But at the same time, we didn't see enough from them in spring where we said, oh yeah, these are definitely the guys. We had to go out and get a shorter, get a hooks, play these guys uh, for you know six weeks to see if they could be the dudes. And I mean, it's clear to me now after the last two weeks of watching these games, Peyton Thorne, hasn't been as nearly as big of the problem as he's been getting the blame. Totally. He's been blamed a lot more than perhaps he should have been. And the wide receivers have been the much bigger issue than a lot of places are talking about that. You've been very consistent on the wide receiver play not being good enough, but a lot of places amongst the Auburn fan base have put almost all of that blame solely on this, the lap of Peyton Thorne. And I think at this point, well, you it is it's hard to sit back and rationally admit he's been the problem when it's when reality it's been the wide receivers either not being in the right place or not making the play when they did finally get to the right place. I mean, we saw we saw a touchdown pass, a deep a deep shot dropped. We saw multiple deep shots that should have been completed that maybe Cam, you know Cam Brown jumped too early or. It hit a guy in the hands and he dropped it. And, and Amari Kelly. Yeah. Amari Kelly. And and so the issue has been the wide receivers, not so much Peyton Thorne. He's obviously not been good enough to be, you know, for Auburn to be in a bowl, like undefeated if we had better receivers. But the, the bigger problem has been the wide receivers. And that's, that's, I hope, I'm hopeful that we fix that to the best of our abilities with this current roster as of now. Yeah. I mean, five drops is a lot. And it kind of felt like, more than that at times yeah. on Saturday. And it's just, it's frustrating, especially when you look at, when you look at like the Alabama and LSU game Saturday night, it's like, man, we've got a long way to go to get to that point. And I know Alabama comes to Jordan Hare and you never know what can happen in an iron bowl um, when it's in that stadium. I'm not saying Auburn's out of it, but if you're going to keep up with them, you've got to catch the football and you've got to be able to capitalize on these things that you work so hard for. Like, and I talked to Brad law and they, they, they did this on the broadcast, but the radio broadcast talking about how Amari Kelly came off the sideline after that drop. And he was, he was devastated. Right. And, and, and I'm sure, like, I'm sure he was sick. I mean, <laughs> that, that's what you work so hard for in the summer on is to get open. So you can kind of catch that and run and have this big explosive touchdown. Like that's why, yeah. That's what these wide receivers work so hard for. And they had all of these opportunities and Cam Brown in a game, he's probably been begging for a jump ball downfield like that. And he probably got too antsy with it and jumped too early. Like these people are human. I get where they're coming from. You know, mm -hmm. they hate it way more than we do. And we want oh. them to catch it so, so bad. Right. But at some point you got to execute. 
You got to execute. And like Rivaldo, PFF charted him with two drops. I think Auburn just charted him with one, but um, it seemed like he it seemed like he had multiple drops. And like that, I, I'm okay writing that off. Like I don't think that's an actual issue. Is worry about the reliability of Rivaldo Fairweather. I think Javaris Johnson having drops. Like I don't think that's an actual issue either. But this is a thing that pops up every week. Um, when I, when Auburn has a chance to get going, it's just these case of the dropsies. It's just it's destroying this offense. But I mean, you, you've touched on it. Like Peyton Thorne's been great. I mean, what he did over the last two weeks. Need to add that caveat. Over the last two weeks, yeah. Peyton Thorne has been solid. He hasn't been great. He's been solid. Let me correct myself. the The pick six was really bad. The pick six was awful. Not great. Um, mm -hmm. And they talked about this on the radio broadcast too. He, he just, he came to the sideline. He's like, I didn't see him. I didn't see him. And you know, I believe you, Peyton. <laughs> I believe that you didn't see him. I, I like to think if you saw him, you would have thrown that pass. But outside of that, like I, I think Peyton was fine on Saturday. The the third and goal throw that was vastly underthrown uh, on replay, he got hit. Dylan Wade got driven into him. So like that, that took some wind out of that ball. So I, I, I'm okay with that one too. I think Peyton was fine. I mean, we talked about adjusted completion percentage and, and, and all of that. Like, I, I think Peyton Thorne is doing good enough. When you look at Auburn's defense and what Peyton Thorne has been able to do now as far as giving receivers a chance to make plays combined with the running game, I think this is the best state that Auburn has been in all season, which is exactly what you want at the start of November. Auburn is trending in the right direction. And we haven't been able to say that at this point in the season in a few years. Yeah, it, it feels like Auburn is heading towards, I mean, knock on wood, like they should be favored in every game between now and the Iron Bowl. And, you know, that should be something you're well, they're cruising not, into. The, they're, they're not favored against Arkansas. I think they should be. I agree with you. Saying. Yeah, they, they should be favored in every game and from now until the Iron Bowl. And if everything goes right, they should be cruising into the Iron Bowl already having bowl eligibility. And just worrying about, okay, let's see if we can cap off this season, which started off rough, and we rebounded to make a bowl, which was Hugh Freeze's goal. Let's see if we can cap this off with an Iron Bowl victory, or at least, you know, playing him incredibly close and getting that moral victory that doesn't, you know, not a real thing. But um, if I'm going back now, if, like, if, if I'm at this point of the season and you give me the ability to swap out players to try to fix Auburn's problems, quarterback's not the first place I'm going. And it, it's, I mean, it's, it's obvious that you need a wide receiver to step up. Like you said, they've been trying, pushing so hard to make an impact that it sometimes Cam Brown probably got a little bit excited that he finally got that jump ball and just screwed it up. But that's the last missing piece is for one of these wide receivers. Cause it feels like all of these mistakes for the most part, I haven't charted all of the, the drops, but for the most part, it feels like they're big plays that aren't happening because of the drops. It's not like you dropped a four-yard pass on second and 10. It's a downfield ball that would be a first down or a touchdown or a big play, an explosive play, and those are the drops or those are the misplays. And again, have not charted all of them. This is just vibes coming off the game. But vibes. I feel like like the, the difference in the first half between Auburn and Vanderbilt was Auburn had some explosive plays running the ball with with. Jarquez Hunter. And if you had some of those expo explosive plays in the passing game too, not having dropped touchdowns from Amari Kelly, things like that, I feel like this game isn't nearly as close as the 31 to 15 score. So this is all according to PFF. When Peyton against uh, Vanderbilt, nine yards or fewer, he was seven of 13 and there were four drops. Okay, so under, some of them under were nine close yards. and short. Between 10 to 19, he was three of four with one of them being charted as a drop. And then, you know, going deep over 20 yards downfield, he was two of four with one of them being charted as a drop. So, I mean, that's just, I mean, that's got to be brutal. That's got to yeah. be brutal. So we'll see what happens moving forward. Peyton's not like the savior of this program, but he's way better than I think a lot of Auburn people are treating him. And yeah. even like stuff that doesn't show up in the stat sheet, his ability to like, I mean, there were several plays where there was an unblocked rusher coming at him and he made a play either to extend it and was able to, to, to throw a pass or he would, you know, 
make a miss and he would get a three or four yard run. Like that's stuff that doesn't really show up in the stat sheet, but it keeps drives alive because you get out of that sack. Since we're in PFF and scores, Peyton Thorne's passing grade when he was blitzed, 79.8, which was as good as his passing grade when the pocket was kept clean at 78.5. Like he, he played just as good, if not better, when he had a blitzer in his face than he did uh, when the pocket was completely clean, which is nice. Yeah, I actually think over the course of the season, that grade is higher. I think he's actually graded higher when he's blitzed versus when um, when they haven't. So, so definitely worth monitoring over the next few games. So Auburn now plays the two big ones left, Arkansas and Alabama. Auburn's pass rush will be crucial in the remainder of Auburn's schedule. We'll discuss in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. And LinkedIn Jobs wants to make sure that you have everything you need to whittle out all the folks that you don't need to spend your precious time on and get you the best candidates as quickly as possible and as efficient as possible. LinkedIn Jobs has all these tools when you make a listing for free at LinkedIn Jobs. and uh, They've got all these screening questions that you can add and, and you can make sure, you know, certain people see these job listings. So just head over to LinkedIn jobs, um, dot com, linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Lindsey Crosby, our guest final few minutes on this Monday edition of locked on Auburn. I think Auburn's pass rush has gotten better over the course of the season and you're seeing different guys step up when it comes to generating pressure throughout this season, which I love this past Saturday, Jason Jones, Austin keys, Eugene Asante, Keontae Scott, Marcus Harris, Cam Riley. I mean, you're seeing these different names every week. And I think that's valuable because you can't key on, on, you know, you can't key in on just, you know, Jalen McLeod or just Marcus Harris or just Keldrick Falk, whoever it may be. You've got to focus on different guys. But Lindsay, when you look at the, this is all of NCAA. When you look at Arkansas, Arkansas has allowed 36 sacks this season. That is 122nd in all of college football. That's not good. And you got to think that's got to be worse than the SEC, but it's not. It's not worse than the SEC because <laughs> Alabama <laughs> has allowed 37, one more sack, and they're at 124th in all of college football. And so to me, and I'm talking more so this week, not, not looking ahead to the Iron Bowl because I actually think Alabama's gotten a lot better over the course of the season. Arkansas played a team in Florida that can't do what Auburn does on defense. KJ Jefferson's very good. Rocket Sanders, their running back, is very, very good. Don't get me wrong, but Arkansas is not going to be able, I don't think, is going to be able to do to Auburn what they were able to do to Florida on Saturday. I, I, I'm just, I'm convinced of that because Arkansas, over the course of the season, has been really bad at running the football. They chose to run the football a lot with K.J. Jefferson against Florida, and I just think Auburn's going to be prepared for that. Lindsay, I really, really do. And if you make KJ Jefferson beat you with his arm, he can do that. But the pass rush is so bad. And I just think with Auburn's defensive backs, he's going to have to hold on to that ball a little bit longer, which is going to allow one of these guys in Auburn's front seven to be able to make a play and generate pressure on this quarterback. So to me, that's the big matchup for Arkansas is Auburn's defensive front seven against Arkansas's offensive line and pass protection. And really, I mean, it's a it's a credit to Ron Roberts, right? I mean, it's this is 100% sure. what why you brought Ron Roberts in is to, I'm going to say manufacture pressure. I mean, yeah. these, these guys could have gotten to the quarterback, but what Ron, I mean, the goal of a Ron Roberts defense is havoc, right? It's to confuse the offensive line as to who's coming, who's not, get somebody unblocked, get pressure on the quarterback. And when you look at, what Auburn was able to do as far as the guys who did it. You went through you went through all the names, but it's starters, it's backups, it's linebackers, it's it's defensive linemen, defensive backs, DJ James and Keontae Scott both had tackles for loss out of the secondary. And so I think what this does, you touched on the big thing. I think what this does is if you're 
a struggling offensive line and a struggling offense, which Arkansas is, with a new coordinator because you fired your coordinator midseason, there's no easy way to game plan to face this Auburn defense. You can figure out who are my hot reads, who are the guys I can dump the ball off quickly to if pressure's coming, but you can't say, hey, we have to make sure that we double that guy or we chip him every play so that we can take care of the pressure because you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know who it's going to be, even when Auburn changes personnel. Zykevius Walker, second string defensive end, had multiple tackles for loss on Saturday. And so, you know, Lawrence Johnson's a backup. He had a big tackle for loss in the second he did. half. Yeah. And so which I think I I think I remember talking about like you need guys like him because they're going to step up late in the season and late in the game and give you that depth, that quality depth from the second line. Uh, but to me, this is the big advantage Auburn has over probably the rest of the schedule is the quality of the defensive backs can help hold down an opposing passing game, and Ron Roberts can manufacture enough pressure to keep an offense out of tempo and out of rhythm. And I, I think Auburn's chances against Arkansas this Saturday and then looking forward to the Iron Bowl are all going to be down to how much havoc can Ron Roberts create and can Auburn's offense keep the ball and consistently move the ball enough to keep them from being exhausted, to keep yeah. the defense from getting worn out? Like that's that's the matchups for me. And if you can do those two things, Auburn has a good chance to win both this game and the Iron Bowl in a couple of weeks. It's just a matter of can you do those things? And I feel like I, against Arkansas, I feel like you can. Like we said, Auburn should be favored in this game because their recent performances have looked a lot better than Arkansas's recent performances. Yeah, it, it, it's just interesting. I mean, if if Florida makes that kick, I just don't believe they're favored. And you're like you're, you're saying that's worth that many points. I I just don't. I don't know if I buy that. So we'll talk about Auburn, Arkansas all week for sure. But another win in SEC play for Hugh Freeze and the Auburn Tigers. Um, we're calling it a streak. We're on a streak now, which uh, which I think is good. I think Auburn. I still think Auburn will have a four game winning streak going in to. The Iron Bowl. Lindsay, how can people check out everything that you've got going on? I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. It's the hub for everything, whether it's college baseball, AuburnDaily.com, whether it's minor league baseball, Locked in MLB Prospects, Riving Your Podcast, and on YouTube, or Major League Baseball, BravesToday.com. Yeah, and you can find all my written work at AuburnDaily.com as well. Click that subscribe button. really helps the channel, and we will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.